I'm going to talk about front end analysis or performance analysis and talk about how they relate to instructional design. This is a high level overview, just so you have a basic understanding of what this is. As an instructional designer, you should understand what this is before you start the instructional design process. Um, because it's something that's always going to be done in an organization to make sure that you're actually solving some kind of problem. So why do you do this performance analysis or front end analysis? We do this to determine what the problem is. So we want to figure out what is the appropriate intervention to solve the problem. By intervention, we mean what's the appropriate solution. Is this a training problem? Is this just a communication problem? Is there a glitch in our computer system? Is this a motivation problem? You know, what, what is the problem? So we do a front end analysis to determine if this is a training problem or not, essentially. Um, so how do we begin a performance analysis? How do we figure out what the problem is? Many times the client's gonna come to us and tell us they have the problem and tell us what the solution is. Um, and sometimes they'll come to us and say, we don't know what the problem is, we want you to determine it. Uh, but you always go in, you know, having to ask yourself, I'm going to determine what the problem is. So the first thing we do is we select some kind of front end analysis or performance analysis model. We use some kind of model to help guide us into figuring out what the problem is, because there are a bunch of ways to do it. Um, so in instructional technology, instructional design, we tend to use something called the uh, human performance technology model. It's a performance improvement model um, designed by ISPI, International Society of Performance Improvement, um, but we call it the HPT model, human performance technology. Let me show you what this model looks like. All right, so for those of you that are listening, I'm just going to describe it a little bit, and for those of you that are um, watching, you're able to see what it looks like on the screen, um, but you can see that it starts out with the actual performance analysis. This is where we um, actually try to determine what the problem is. So there are really three steps to this model. First, we determine what the problem is. What, the, what, the, what do they need? What is the problem? What do they need? Next step, we determine their solutions. What are the interventions or solutions to the problem? And then we implement and we evaluate it. Implementation and evaluation. Let me go into more detail on each of those. So, the first thing we do, so in this performance analysis, I said there was really three main steps, which are doing the actual figuring out the needs, which is really the performance analysis, coming up with the solutions, the intervention, and then the implementation and evaluation, which I kind of lumped them together in many times, in many ways. Um, so in the performance analysis, how do we determine what that initial problem is? So we really, you know, the way the HPT model has us break it down is in two categories. We really do our organization analysis, which is the who, what, where, when, why. Who's the company? You know, and there's tons of material on how to do an in-depth organizational analysis. I'm giving the high-level overview in this presentation, um, so I'm not giving the in-depth. But the organizational analysis is the who, what, where, when, and why. Who's the company? What is their problem? Who approached you for the problem? That kind of stuff. Then we do what's called the gap analysis, or the needs analysis, needs assessment. Um, the gap analysis helps us determine what the problem is. I'm going to show or talk about an example on the next slide so you can kind of uh, get an idea of what that is a little better. But the gap analysis is really, here's what they have, here's what they want, and here's how we're going to solve it. So we come up with the solution there. Um, and then we do something, you know, we also, while we're doing all this, because we have to do these at the same exact time. So we're doing this organizational analysis, this gap analysis, and the cause analysis all at the same time. The cause analysis helps us really come up with the root cause of the problem. Um, so there are a few ways to do that and that help, really helps us with our gap analysis because we're trying to identify their needs. So what is the real cause? And I'm, I have a slide that I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, so once we've identified our problem and we've come up with some solutions for it, we actually, we have our solutions, our client agrees, we start on our interventions. So what does that mean? That means is if training was the problem, we do some form of adding. 
Otherwise, we solve it with other means. Like if it was a communication issue, we deal with the communication. Um, then we implement it. You know, we implement the solution. If there's some change in the organization, we may be going through some, if it's a big change, we may be implementing some change strategies, you know, um, and then we're gonna evaluate it. Did it work? Is it working? Does it need to be changed further? Okay, so this gap or needs analysis, what does this really mean? So I have an example here, and the example is so we have our what we currently have, what the client currently has, what is desired by the client, and then what is recommended. So currently, the client has a one-hour PowerPoint lecture. Okay, what they want is they want this PowerPoint lecture to be a one-hour or you know whatever the time is uh, online lesson. Um, they want it to be some kind of computer-based or online lesson. They also want to make sure that the learners learn the content, and they want to make sure that it's placed into a learning management system or an LMS, such as like Blackboard, Canvas, you know, some desire to learn, something like that. Moodle. All right, so the recommended solution would be, okay, so we can develop this in computer-based instruction. We may have some kind of discussion forum or some kind of discussion around it, some online asynchronous discussion. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna use some instructional strategies to develop this, some motivational theory. We may put a case study or two in this and we're gonna implement it into the LMS that they're considering purchasing, which is Blackboard. Um, so the gap analysis is we take all of their what they currently have, what they desire, and what is recommended. Now this is a very simple example of it because they may have 10 things that they have currently have and what they desire. And there may even be another column in this rather than current, desired, and recommended. It may be current, desired, recommended, or what's possible versus what you know, because sometimes that desired versus recommended are two different things. So there may be a a few options in the recommended. Like I recommend this, you know, if they really want to invest in it, or I recommend this if they don't. So you can kind of, you know, play with that table a little bit based on your client and the situation. And I said I was going to talk, come back to the cause analysis a little bit, um, because how do you can how do you really de determine the root cause of the their problem? Um, we don't want to look at the actual symptom. We want to look for the actual cause. So there are a few ways to do this. And usually you do a few different ways. You know, you want to interview and talk to people and figure out how do you get to that cause. But one way, so there are three really t types of things that you can look at, you know, three main data points to look at. And the first is the five whys, where we keep asking ourselves why five times. Like, for example, my car is dented. Why? Because someone threw a rock at it. Why? Um, because it was parked on the street. Well, why was it parked on the street? Um, because I didn't want to park it in the driveway. Why? Well, because there were two other cars in my driveway. Why? Well, because I haven't cleaned my garage, so my, my other cars can't fit in the garage. Okay, so now we have the root cause of my problem. Why did my car get damaged? The symptom was the damage and all in the parking on the street and stuff, but the reason that it got damaged is because my garage is not clean, so I can't park it there. So I got to the root cause by keep you keep asking yourself why, 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 so you get to that root cause. Um, so the root cause is I, the solution is I need to clean my garage, and it won't happen anymore. All right, next thing is a Pareto chart and a fishbone diagram. I'm going to uh, talk about them in just a second. And if there are multiple reasons why, multiple causes, you may have 10. You may have to pick, you know, the first one or maybe the first three or maybe the first five, depending on how large the project is and how valuable those, each of those causes are to really solving the problem. So we have a fishbone diagram. A fishbone diagram is really like a skeleton. We think of like a fishbone where it analyzes the people the methods, the materials, the environment, and any like objective measurements we might have that can help us help us to identify the cause of the problem. Think of a fishbone diagram as a brainstorming activity where you sit in a room with a group of people, you have a big piece of paper on the board and you all kind of list who are the people, what are you know, you're determining what the causes are. It's a brainstorming session to help you determine to find them. And the Pareto chart is really just to think of a graph, a chart, a graph. 
because you sometimes can pull up numbers or data points and see right away, like in the example I have here on the screen, I'm showing just a normal graph and you can see right away, oh, documents have the most customer complaints. Right away, I can see that documents and product quality have the most complaints versus packaging and delivery. Um, so you can see it's a good visual of, hey, here's what the, you know, you can enter in your data points and say, oh, well, this is telling me this is the problem. It can help me identify the root cause. And using all these methods plus interviews and everything really helps you identify that problem. Okay, so let me show you or talk about how this all fits into instructional design. Um, so we're, if we're putting this all together, that performance analysis, determining what is the problem, what's the cause, what is the problem? It helps us determine, is training the problem? If training is the problem, then we start instructional design. So we're doing all of this before we're really going into the instructional design process. We're determining, is training the problem? That's the idea of this front end or performance analysis. If training is not the problem, then we do something else. Or sometimes it's training and five other things. Training is just one of the solutions. And that's where we come in as instructional designers. But you need to first understand performance analysis so you get, oh, here's how we arrive to this point. And that's where we select an instructional model like Addy. So you can see there's a number of different models. Like we have, I just said HPT, and then we have these Dick and Carey and all these instructional design models, how they fit together. HPT fits into this performance analysis. What is the problem? What are our solutions? Is training the problem? Yes, now we start instructional design. If training is not the problem, we solve using other means. Thank you.